Hello and welcome to Socky Tech. In today's video, I will show you how to get a shallow depth of field and lots of bokeh in your photos. And I will define what these mean in a second. Now this video is mainly targeted for beginners. So I'm not going to confuse you with technical terms. Rather, I will give you a quick introduction, show you some example shots, and then show you how to get it done yourself on a DSLR camera. See the description below for my full playlist of DSLR photography tips, tricks, and tutorials. I will be adding new courses often, so subscribe to my channel and stay tuned by keeping an eye on the DSLR photography playlist. Alright, so back to business. Let's talk about depth of field. So you can either have a shallow depth of field or a deep depth of field. With a shallow depth of field, you can highlight a main object by making sure it is in crisp focus while everything else is out of focus thereby blurred out. Now the blur is called bokeh. With the deep depth of field more of everything will be in focus and sharp which is great if you want everything in focus especially good for landscape photography. So if you're taking a picture of a wide beautiful vista you want to make sure that everything is in focus so the viewer can appreciate the complete beautiful vista. The best way to be able to master depth of field is to get yourself acquainted with the aperture priority mode on your camera. So if you have your camera handy go ahead and set the mode dial to aperture priority mode. Now why the aperture priority mode? Because aperture value is mainly what controls your depth of field and aperture value such as f3.5 will give you a shallow depth of field while a higher aperture value such as f22 will give you a deeper depth of field. And I also want to let you know that the aperture priority mode is in fact a semi-auto mode. So everything else such as the ISO and the shutter speed will be set automatically. Okay. So once you're in this mode all you have to do is change the aperture to your liking and everything else will adjust automatically to get you a well exposed shot. Alright so sometimes to understand the concept better the best way is to actually do a live demonstration. So in this segment what I will do is I will take a bunch of pictures using different aperture values and as we take the pictures we will see how the aperture value actually affects the depth of field. So all cameras are a little bit different. This camera is a Canon 70D so I will be using the dial that is on the camera to change the aperture value. So take a look at the aperture value at the bottom here. Okay, so as I change my dial, the aperture value changes with the dial. This is also a touch screen, so I can actually touch on this and change the aperture value that way. But I'll just prefer, I'll just stick to the dial on the camera, the physical dial. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take pictures at the lowest aperture value and then we're going to take a look at it. Alright so let's take a picture of this lens at the lowest aperture value of 1.8. Okay so let me focus, take the picture and this is the actual preview of the picture we just took. As you can see we have amazingly shallow depth of field. We have a crisp clear focus on the lens and everything in the background is blurred out okay and everything in the foreground would also be blurred out if there was anything sitting in front of the lens as long as I focus on the lens the lens remains in crisp clear focus everything else whether behind the lens or in front of the lens gets blurred out I am going to show you a tiny little example after we get through this example how that works okay so let's uh, get out of here this is the preview screen and now I'm going to change the aperture value to 5.6. Focus. I'm pressing the shutter button halfway to focus and pressing it full to take the picture. Okay, now as you can see in this picture, the blurriness in the background is less shallow. Okay, and that is because we increase the aperture value to 5.6 as you can see on the screen on the top left here. 
All right, so let's do one more. So let's increase the aperture to 11. So we have, we are looking at F11. Again, here's the aperture at the bottom here, the number 11. Okay, and now as you can see, again, the aperture, I mean the, um, the blurriness is even less shallow. Okay, more and more stuff is coming into focus as we are increasing the aperture value. And then finally, I'm going to take a shot at a maximum possible aperture. Okay, so for this lens, the maximum possible aperture value is 22. So let's take a picture. So do you see the difference? So much more is in focus now as opposed to when we had the f1.8. So let's go to the preview mode. I'll press the preview button here. And let's take a look at these pictures one by one. So this is the one on the top here. It gives you the aperture value using which the shot was taken. So this is aperture 22, f22. This is 11. This is 5.6. And this is 1.8. Do you see the difference? Okay, so 1.8, 5.6, 11, 22. And like I said, all cameras are a little bit different. So you just have to make sure that you find what dial, what physical button on your camera changes the aperture value. So put your camera in aperture priority mode and then take shots at different aperture values to see the difference for yourself. If you want to blur the background, all you want to do is you want to focus on the main subject and let the background go completely blur, blurry, which is also known as bokeh. The more blurry it is, the stronger bokeh you've got. All right, so I'm going to show you one final thing. So as of now, this lens over here is in focus. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put another lens right over here. And as you can see, this is in front of it, okay? So as you can see, anything I put in front of it is also out of focus and it's blurred out. So everything behind this guy is out of focus, the background, and everything in front of this guy is out of focus. Now as I take this guy and bring it closer to that lens, it actually starts to come in focus itself. Okay, so anything you put in this area is going to be in focus. It's going to be a straight line and everything in this line is going to be in focus okay and anything that you bring forward is going to get blurred out it's going to uh, be bokeh and everything behind the lens is also going to be blurred out okay so that's what you need to understand about shallow depth of field and depth of field in general so even if i bring my finger over to the front of the lens it's going to be out of focus okay and if as i go closer to the lens it gets in focus okay and if I go behind the lens I'm going to be out of focus as well and that is how depth of field actually works all right so uh, earlier I said that aperture value is mainly what controls the depth of field now there are two more things that do control the depth of field so you can get greater control over the depth of field using two other methods the first one is the distance your camera is from the main subject of focus. The closer you are to the main subject of focus, the more blurry the background will become. Okay? So if you bring your lens closer to the subject, the background blurs out even more. The second one is the focal length of your camera at the time of shooting. So the more zoomed in you are on your subject, the more blur you will achieve. Now obviously this is only possible on lenses that have a variable focal length. The higher your focal length, the more blurry the background is. So the three things that control your uh, blurriness, the depth of field, is the aperture value, which is the main control. Then you've got the distance of your camera from the main subject of focus. And the final one is the focal length of your camera. The higher uh, the focal length, the more zoomed in you are on a subject the blurrier the background alrighty so remember these tips take some practice shots using different aperture values different focal lengths and adjust your distance from the main subject of focus 
and also stick to aperture priority mode as a beginner because you don't have to worry about anything but the aperture itself okay every other setting is set automatically the aperture priority mode is a semi auto mode so even though you control the aperture value everything else is automatic see the description below for my full playlist of DSLR photography tips tricks and tutorials I will be adding new courses often so subscribe to my channel and stay tuned by keeping an eye on the DSLR photography playlist.